Most often in music, divisive topics like sexuality are discussed with all the nuance of a sledgehammer hitting someone in the genitals. Part of that bluntness has to do with the simple fact that the majority of songs hover around the 3 to 4 minute mark, which doesn't leave a whole lot of time for subtlety. So it shouldn't surprise you that most of the songs about non-heterosexual love come at you hard and fast, whilst basically wearing a name tag that says, This is about being gay, do you hear it? And since the topic of bisexuality requires even more shades and tints to really explain the whole picture, you're even less likely to hear many attempts at crafting a tune around it. It's also a topic that's somehow taken less seriously among the general public. Bisexuality is often mislabeled as experimentation, and those who proclaim their sexual attraction towards both genders are alienated or ridiculed for not making a decision. Songs that overly fetishize the subject like Katy Perry's infamous I Kissed a Girl don't really help the cause either. But not to worry, there are still a handful of artists brave enough and witty enough to write understated, passionate songs about bisexuality. I am Kirsten from What Culture Music, and these are seven songs that you didn't know are about being bisexual. Number seven, Coming Clean by Green Day. Secrets collecting dust but never forget skeletons. To come to life in my closet, I found out what it takes to be a man. Now mum and dad will never understand. Confusion, anxiety and repression, these are the basic tenets of being a teenager. You're supposed to understand the world around you when you don't even understand yourself. So instead of doubling down on the unease of not knowing, a lot of teens just extinguish that whole getting to know yourself thing before they really get a chance to think things through. That's how Billy Joe Armstrong felt when he wrote Coming Clean, his attempt to describe the awkwardness that came with discovering his own sexual preferences. I think I've always been bisexual. I mean, it's something that I've always been interested in. I think everybody kind of fantasizes about the same sex. I think people are born bisexual, and it's just that our parents and society kind of veer us off into this feeling of, oh, I can't. They say it's taboo. It's ingrained in our heads that it's bad, when it's not bad at all. It's a very beautiful thing. Growing up in San Francisco area, Armstrong questioned his own sexuality constantly, and although he now has a wife, the Green Day frontman isn't afraid to express the other side of himself. Number 6. Invisible Man by Queen Never had a real good friend, not a boy or a girl, no one knows what I've been through, let my flag unfurl. The world may never know Freddie Mercury's true sexual identity, and that's both completely fine and a little sad, because on one hand, nobody should care and we should all just celebrate how awesome this guy was as an artist and human being. But it would also be terrible if, given that society had a much different perception of sexuality at the time he died, Mercury was holding it back because he felt like he had to. Still, we do know that Mercury had a long-term relationship with Mary Austin, a woman he described in his dying days as the love of my life. We also know that he was very flamboyant on stage and, according to some close friends, unafraid to flaunt his homosexuality. Also, the event Celebrate Bisexual Day falls on Freddie's birthday. Whatever his sexual orientation, there does seem to be a hefty number of dichotomies in his song lyrics, perhaps most obviously in The Invisible Man. This song is clearly about putting on a facade, one that leaves others unable to know the real person underneath it all. Considering his personality and the uptight world around him, it's more than likely that this is relaying his own difficulties in laying bare his sexual identity. Number 5. John, I'm Only Dancing by David Bowie John, I'm only dancing, she turns me on. But I'm only dancing, she turns me on. Don't get me wrong. Some insist that David Bowie was just a straight man who liked to experiment, whether that be in his music or in his bedroom. That's what's called the it was just a phase line of reasoning, and it doesn't usually hold much water when the experimentation in question stretches through many years. In John I'm Only Dancing, Bowie sings the part of a man in a homosexual relationship who happens to get a little aroused by a woman he's dancing with. The title summarises the simple explanation he gives to his partner, assuring him that despite the feeling he's getting from this girl, maybe in his heart or maybe in his pants, there's nothing to worry about. It's really just a bit of light-hearted fun about the topic, and during the whole time he wrote it was probably the most palatable way to talk about it. Number 4. Tonight's the Night's Gonna Be Alright 
by Janet Jackson. This is just between me and you. And you. Originally recorded by Rod Stewart, tonight's The Night gets an even sexier revamping under the guardianship of Miss Jackson. Stewart's version, though suggestive in its own right, has nothing on the lustfulness coming from Janet, who begins the song with a promise of a threesome. Yeah, that bit about being between me and you and you isn't some deep sentiment about getting to know the real you. It's simple mathematical statement about what's going to happen in the boudoir. Further evidence of this three's company scenario is provided in the choruses, alternating between I love you boy and I love you girl. Janet's breathy, sensual delivery is only emboldened by the non-traditional sexual interplay. But lest you think this was just some cheap ploy to stir up a little media controversy, a la her wardrobe malfunction at the Super Bowl a few years ago. You should know that Janet's Velvet Rope album that Tonight's the Night is featured was honoured by the National Black Lesbian and Gay Leadership Forum for its seemingly pro-gay and bisexual content, and also received the award for Outstanding Music Album at the 9th Annual GLAAD Media Awards. Number 3. Baby Blue by Joan Jett Switch hitter. You know she plays the field. She ain't concerned. Oh, as long as it's real. When it comes to sexuality, most people feel more comfortable being able to put someone in a box. They might not care one way or another, but they want to be able to identify someone with a label. You're gay, you're straight, you're transsexual, etc. And it can be really frustrating for those people to not know what someone categorizes themselves as. So they're probably annoyed with Joan Jett, who refuses to discuss her sexuality in the media. And her response? Too damn bad. She never came out as openly anything, which is pretty cool in its own right. Still, there have been a number of interesting tidbits of sexuality making its way into her music, most notably on the album Sinner, which contains no fewer than three songs that talk about free-flowing sexual habits. First, there's a cover of ACDC by British glam rock band The Sweets, a song that takes its name from the old slang word for bisexual. There's also a cover of The Replacements Androgynous and the song Baby Blue, which alludes to a girl who proudly wears the badge of a switch hitter. Number 2. Forrest Gump by Frank Ocean Forrest Gump, you run my mind. Boy running on my mind. Boy, you're so buff and so strong, I'm nervous, Forrest. Homosexuality and bisexuality aren't really discussed in R&B music. Well, usually not without a little condemnation attached to it anyway. That's part of what makes Frank Ocean such a unique perspective within its genre. Not only does he move far beyond the typical vague sentiments of love that populate so much of the genre's most popular output, but he does so while declaring his own bisexuality. Rather than disguising the gender of his love interest in Forrest Gump with generic pronouns like you or they, he chose to be forthright about the song's topic. When asked about it in interviews, he's passionate, saying that he has no interest in playing into the sexual whitewashing of pop music. It's not always about a man and a woman, and Forrest Gump proves that can be a great and wonderful thing. His debut album, Channel Orange, features a few other songs that hint at Ocean's sexual preferences, but none have quite the same effect as Forrest Gump. Because the greatest thing about this song isn't the declaration of man-on-man -man love, it's the casual breeziness that Ocean delivers it with. Inserting stupid jokes about his ex-lover like this was just another love song. Not a love song about him being bisexual, just a love song. And that's the greatest statement of all. Number 1. Poker Face by Lady Gaga Play the cards with spades to start, and after he's been hooked, I'll play the one that's on his heart. I won't tell you that I love you, kiss or hug you, cause I'm bluffing with my muffin. We all know by now that Lady Gaga is a huge advocate for LGBT community, and her hit Born This Way passionately tackles the subject of nature versus nurture when it comes to sexual preferences. And that's awesome! Because yes, gay people are born gay, and bisexual people can't simply choose who they're attracted to. But Born This Way wasn't the first time that Gaga commented on sexual orientation. That happened a few years earlier, when she wrote about the many occasions that she pictured women to get aroused while having sex with men. During an interview with BBC's Jonathan Ross, she explained that her second hit single, Poker Face, is actually about disguising your sexuality. 
When I was making love to my old boyfriend, I used to think about women sometimes. Gaga also revealed in Rolling Stone that she doesn't tell her boyfriend's little facts like this because they're all intimidated by it, and it makes them uncomfortable, so she's got really good at hiding her bisexuality. So there you have it, that's what her pa 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 poker face was actually hiding. And that's our list of the songs that you didn't know were about being bisexual. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't already, click that subscribe button. But for now, I have been Kirsten from What Culture, and I will see you in the next video.